the five minutes. Written testimonies shall be submitted to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks, Guam Products, Haganya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs. Please provide our legislative staff with your written testimony for photocopying if you indeed have written testimony. Testimony shall be confined to the substance. Persons will be allowed to present oral testimony only once. Once you are done, you may be asked to remain in the room for questions or for additional testimony as may be desired by the members of the panel. When you speak, please make sure that the microphone is on and that you speak into the microphone and to turn it off once you are finished speaking. So first, as noted previously, we will hear from the executive director, Ms. Lassia Kassil, and then we will move on to the other elements. Sijus Masi and uh, welcome, Executive Director. It's very good to have you here this morning. Manana Sijus. Hi. Manana and half a day. Thank you so much, Senator Marsh and Senator Trelahi, for um, allowing me to come before you this morning to um, raise awareness. And, and education about the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority and um, our project, the Hagatnya Master Plan. Um, I do have a PowerPoint presentation um, that goes over a lot of it. And should I commence with that? Is that okay? Okay. So um, the Hagatnya Restoration, right now there's only two staff. <laughs> in the agency, it's myself and Joseph um, Santos. He's actually been um, a part of the agency for the past four years, uh, the driving force, and he's done a lot of work, um, the backbone, and um, I just wanna say, you know, give a little prayer right now because he's, uh, you know, he's got a, a off island on medical leave and, and he would be here to support us, but he had to leave on Monday, so, um, yeah. Um, before I start, I want to explain that the master plan, it, it's not, next slide please, it, it's not intended to be a rigid, inflexible set of standards. It's, it's a vision and a framework for the future. So, so please kept, keep this in mind. It's not set in stone. Uh, most of what you see is conceptual. There's been a lot of artistic license that's been taken um, with, with the designs, especially the video. There are only two projects that have actually been designed, the Palasu and the Land Resources Building. Um, the, 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 the designs are meant to give you an idea of the footprint uh, of what a, a, a development will be, the height, the width, whether or not the, the sight line will be obstructed. Um, other than that, you know, everything else is, is conceptual. Um, and should a particular project move forward, um, the HRA will engage with the appropriate agencies to begin the, the architectural design process for that, that project. Next slide, please. The, what is the authority? The authority is, uh, it was enacted by Public Law 24-110 in 1997. Um, and its purpose is to revitalize, promote, preserve, and protect the heritage and economic vitality of the city of Hagatnya. And it requires that the Hagatnya Restoration and Redevelopment Authority um, create a master plan. That is our mission. So over the years, next slide please, the vision statement has evolved. It's been very lengthy and we have somehow um, tightened it, and so this is our vision statement, to reestablish Agatnya as the capital city of Guam and the governmental, cultural, and commercial heart of the island, supported by vibrant residential mixed-use areas. Next slide. Our board of commissioners is uh, comprised of uh, nine members, and the nominees are currently uh, for chairman Maria Le Leon Guerrero, um, for Vice Chair Patty Ada, um, the Honorable Mayor John Cruz is, is a member, um, Commissioner Nick Kiswani, he was uh, nominated by the Speaker, um, Gregory Perez is incumbent, 
um, I need to update this. Yesterday, the, the governor nominated Carlos Madrid to also be on the commission. Um, Mr. Roque Alcantara, uh, also Eduardo J. Calva, and Rita T. Franquez. Um, so it's very good to see the board of commissioners who are presently uh, in place. If I could have you provide some information about them, uh, just so that we're all understanding where things are at. So, um, and it was very helpful to hear uh, which ones have been recently uh, placed and which ones are in progress. So again, that's very good to hear about uh, progress being made by uh, your office and how you are helping move things forward through uh, your work and the legislature and the administration working all together. So with that, um, if you could help us understand uh, perhaps each one's either background or expertise, just so that uh, we here and the general public have an understanding of the different ways that they're going to be contributing on the board? Sure. Um, so many of the, 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 the nominees are, are also residents and business owners here in Hagatnya. Um, I, Mr. Nick Kaswani is also here, so I, I think he can, I'll defer to him to come up and speak for himself. Actually, it's the first time I'm meeting him today. Um, I know that Dr. Carlos Madrid is a historian, um, and I do have one of his studies here on um, the influence. Where is it here? I'll submit that to you um, on, on Chamorro history and Spanish history. Um, Rita Franquez is also a resident of, 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 of uh, Hagatnya. So, do you want to? Mr. Kaswani. Oh, if you could just introduce yourself, sir. Mr. This is Kaswani. Mr. Kaswani. He was nominated by the speaker. Yes, if you could let us know um, your expertise uh, so that we understand with the board composition the different ways that the board members are going to be able to help move the, the plan forward. Well, hi, my name is uh, Nick Kiswani. I come from the uh, program management field. Lab got 35 plus years of program management experience in uh, particularly in engineering construction type projects and this master plan is a very challenging program to look forward to rather than collection of projects is really looking at it programmatically we can ascertain that it's a long range program that will allow us the ability to revitalize downtown and I'm excited to have been selected to serve on the board because I think I can bring a lot to the table from a background of engineering experience and construction management experience and program management experience with along with all the other stakeholders and along with all the board members I think we can make a major contribution towards moving this program forward in a very efficient and methodical way. So as Masi for that and so um, I, I know that you listed uh, different types of experience so one of them I believe was civil engineering and then uh, program management among some others, so uh, that's very good to hear. Thank you. Um, the other question, again, just so that we all understand where we're at with the board composition, uh, do you have an understanding or can you share with us when each board member's term will expire or where we're at? Um, I know they serve five-year terms, so if you could let us know. Right now, um, the only board members actually on there are Greg Perez and the mayor. So all the other members have just recently been nominated. We're going through the vetting process. I believe that Rita Franquez is the only name that has been transmitted to the legislature. Um, so hopefully in the next few weeks, or and Mr. Kaswani as well. Um, uh, I know that Dr. Madrid was only nominated yesterday, and, and so they've reached out to him. Uh, so it'll be a few more weeks, I think, in, until uh, it's fully uh, completed with the vetting process and the names are transferred. All right, so uh, just to make sure that I'm understanding you clearly and uh, the rest of us have that clear understanding. So all the other members, uh, Ms. Maria Leon Guerrero, Ms. Uh, Patty Ada, and so forth that are listed, they, they have been recently nominated, but they are in process 
Okay, correct. And so uh, everybody here should be Commissioner Greg Perez current. is already is is on the board. Yeah. Okay, so they should be current. Um, this should be a current listing, as far as you know, adding in Carlos Madrid, and then, as you stated, it will be finalized so that we'll have uh, three, six, we'll have nine members in place very Correct. shortly. Very good. And um, so let's see, uh, their expertise, and uh, um, if, there, if one is listed as chair and vice chair, um, has there been a board meeting uh, where that election took place? I, I believe by the law that, that the governor uh, appoints the vice chair and who um, the chairman is. Okay, so um, she appointed her as chair and vice chair. Correct. Okay. So uh, again, it's very good to see that that's in place because uh, that will really give you the ability, the authority, the ability to um, move both the plan forward and other elements of the work that your office will be doing. Um, let me just see if I had any other questions about the Board of Commissioners. And then I guess the only other question I, I would have, well, there are two. Uh, one is when do you anticipate being able to update the website and then when do you anticipate the, the first board meeting to occur? Updating the website, that's something that uh, we're working on right now. It's um, my priority right now is actually identifying uh, the funding for the agency. Um, by law, 24-110, um, the funding for HRRA is supposed to come from the uh, real estate taxes uh, here in Hagatnia, all of the improvements um, from 1997 onwards for the past decade, uh, that has not been collected. So I, I recently met with the governor and we're trying to um, assess how much that is supposed to be. and. Um, it just implement the law. So once we get that funding, we'll be able to move forward with the hiring of our staff and um, the, the design of the website. With regards to the first board meeting, uh, hopefully uh, by April, um, we'll be able to have a board. That, um, that's more readily able to be understood by the general public who are visiting the site. Um, and then uh, for the first meeting, if um, we just ensure that my office is um, apprised so that we can be uh, sending a representative down to be in Absolutely. attendance as well. So uh, let's see. I'll let you move on to the next slide. OK, so next slide, please. Also on our board of commissioners uh, are, are the ex officio um, commissioners. There are nine agencies, the Department of Land Management, Department of Parks and Recreation, the Guam Preservation Trust, the Chamorro Language Commission, the Department of Public Works, the Guam Environmental Protection Agency, the Richard F. Titanel Mark um, Organization at UOG, the Guam Visitors Bureau, and the Department of Integrated Services for Individuals with Disabilities, they all also com uh, are, comprise our, our board as ex officio commissioners. And, and we're very engaged with them. Um, right now, that's also been uh, a mission of mine the past couple of months, is to reach out to, to them and try and to revitalize the, re the relationship and, and get them on board. So, uh my question would be then, um, have you been able to secure uh, commitments from them that they will be sending representatives and have you been informed yet who those representatives might be? N not at this time. As I, as I mentioned before, right now, you know, we're, because of uh, 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 reorganizational memo number six under the last administration, the HRRA was, um, placed under DCA for the past eight, 
several years. years. Yes, <laughs> many, many years. Eight years. And um, in December, they had to suddenly move out of their office space into um, the Angela Flores building, which is where the repository is. So 2,000 square feet of office equipment, information, filing cabinets are cramped into one little room. Um, so I, I've spent a lot of time educating myself on what the plan is. Uh, you know, I wanted to be able to speak, um, you know, with, with, with uh, authority on, on what, what it is. And uh, sitting with Joe, there, there are only two of us, um, studying every aspect about it and trying to uh, bring up to speed myself. Um, so we're still in the process of reaching out to the ex officio members. We, we, I, I'm working very closely with Gita. Um, I've, just last week, I gave a presentation to the cabinet uh, on what uh, the, the master plan is. Um, and, you know, I'll continue to reach out to them. Um, you mentioned some of the information and I think that's a, a good status update is the understanding that I believe there's been an executive order that has changed that relationship with HRA being underneath the DCA. Uh, did you want to explain that a little bit for sure. the general public? So uh, this, this project is very important to the governor. Uh, rebuilding our, our, our capital city of Agatnya. You know, it's going to bring huge economic development um, to the island. And so under Executive Order 2 on, I believe it's January 16th, she ordered that the um, Higatnya Restoration Authority be moved from under DCA and made autonomous again. And um, appointed myself as, as the executive director to, to help move this forward. So, uh, you know, a lot of it has been trying to, to re revitalize an agency that's been dormant for a long time. And um, the funding is a huge part of that and, and trying to assess what the taxes are to f help fund our agency. It's, 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 uh, it's been a um, challenge. And with, with um, Joe's health recently, you know, it's kind of, uh, stalled some of our, our, our work. Um, but we are talking, you know, with um, Joe Borja from the Department of... Good morning, Senator. <laughs> um, and so we're going to get some, some help detailed from, from other agencies to help um, with, with assessing what the taxes are to help fund our agency so we can move forward. You also brought up the issue um, of office space. Um, and so I know that has been one of the things that you've been working on. Can you uh, update us on where you are in the process of, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, situating yourself and your staff in an office space and where that is so that if somebody wants to reach out, uh, they know where to locate you? Sure. Um, currently, uh, Joe sits at the Angela Flores building um, with CAHA, um, as I said previously, they, they were a part of DCA, and so they were all grouped together. That's where all of our equipment is, where all of our information and files to work with are. Um, there's absolutely no space for two people there, so that's why I sit at Gita sometimes. Um, but to do work, I go down and, and sit next to Joe. Um, to reach me, I can be reached you know, via email at lasia.castil at hrra.guam.gov. Um, I, I receive all my mail through Adeloupe, so if you just address it to the HRRA um, and, and send it to the governor's office, I have a mailbox there. I call there every morning to see if I have mail. Um, that really is the most efficient way to, to, to reach, reach me. And um, my number um, is my cell number, and I think all of you have that. <laughs> so, so um, yeah. Right now, uh, you know, with, with the recent change um, in Joe's health the other day, um, I actually met with Mel from Gita, and they are actually uh, moving other offices out um, to make room for us. So I, I think that we're actually going to move up there until the end of the fiscal year uh, so that uh, we don't have to worry about things. And, and being at the repository is, you know, it, it's... 
with all the, 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 the remains there, sometimes it can be a little daunting after 5 p.m. <laughs> so, so. so just Masi for that update. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, what you say makes a lot of sense. Um, you're now no longer under DCA, so uh, moving out to your own identified space uh, makes a lot of sense. And we had also been talking to Gita, uh, to the director there, Ms. Mel Mendiola, mm -hmm. and she had identified that she does have space for both you and uh, your staff, and hopefully, uh, it sounds like they may have room for some additional staff if you get additional staff as well. And we had sent you a letter about that. So it's good to see that that's all lining up yeah. and um, that's getting into place. Um, let's see, uh, is there anything else you wanted to mention about the ex officio members before we perhaps ask a, a few questions about some of the work that you're doing? Um. Not at this time, no. Go ahead. So, and uh, I'd like to recognize that uh, Senator Amanda Shelton has joined us. So, Sujus Masi for being here with us today. And please, Senator, since this is more conversational, if you have questions, um, to please jump in as well. Um, so, part of what I wanted to ask is, um, what, what documents you have been examining that you think are pertinent, and then what steps do you, do you envision as being important for you for, for this year uh, to, to work at accomplishing? Um, I think the most important document has been the master plan. Um, I have read through it and marked it up, as you can see, this is my own copy here, um, going through and making sure that, um, one, it addresses the governor's uh, platform of um, economic development, of you know, equal housing, um, and also addresses the law, 24-110, which states that, that it has to address these issues, low-income housing, um, developing businesses, um, preserving our history. Um, yes, also I've been going through and reading a lot of the notes from the previous uh, meetings um, submitted by the ex officio members with their comments and questions and, and making sure that you know a lot of those things have been addressed in the, the master plan. Um, other documents have I official letters I've been working with Gita on developing um, the priority of the HRI SEDS um, program and I have Mr. Diego here from Gita who can also um, speak about that if you want he can okay so um, please come to the table um, we might get to the SEDS listing in just a minute um, or in a, f a few minutes. <clears throat> um, I'd like to ask, have you been able to identify and look at the previously completed hydrology study? The hydrology, I actually, that is one of the things I did not bring. I'm sorry okay. about that. Oh, no, you don't yeah. have to bring them all. You'd have to be transporting perhaps your whole office. So, <laughs> but just uh, if you've been able to to locate the hydrology study, it sounds like you have, and then if you've been able to read through it and, and see where that, that study is at. I, I believe that's an old study, mm -hmm. and I, 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 this is something I would have to defer to um, Joe about, you know, he's more of the technical person here, um, but I think we addressed this in your questions that you sent over. Good. Um, Right, and with the contract with the consulting company, have you had or taken the opportunity, I should say, to go over that contract to understand where that's at, whether it's completed, what work is still needs to be done in order for the master plan to be considered completed and their work to have been completed? Sure, I, are you uh, referring to the contract with Matrix? Yes. Yes, okay. So actually, I think, um, uh, 
I actually brought that. I have gone over it, and right now we are just waiting for um, Yes, 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 yes. The number. Oh, it's in here. Excuse me while I try to find this. River, river feasibility contract, that's what we're talking about. So right now we have um, and I believe I sent you a copy of the, 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 the contract. Right now we're just waiting to um, let's see. It's uh, my understanding, uh, just to help you along, yep. uh, I had a meeting with some representatives from GIDA, and so they said uh, their understanding is that the river feasibility study is about 30% complete, um, but you've maybe been in continued contact with Matrix, and so maybe you've been hearing from them that they're continuing that work and they've moved a little farther along. We actually, Do you have any update on we that? We actually haven't started the river feasibility study. That's the next task in the order, uh, I believe. Do you want to? Sure. Yeah. My name is Diego Mendiola. I'm here representing uh, GIDA uh, for, for this uh, informational uh, briefing. Um, Matrix was uh, procured through an IDIQ contract uh, with uh, task orders to be formed. Task order number one being the Hagatnia Master Plan. Um, the Hagatnia Master Plan is, uh, has a certain number of phases. Phase one being the update to the research report, which was completed. They updated alternative plans for the Hagatnia Master Plan. Um, the land use plan was completed. Establishing a zoning code was completed. Establishing design guidelines complete. Uh, development of an implementation schedule, which is complete. Um, additional sustainment and operations approach complete. Additional engagement activities complete with the one phase for this Hagania Master Plan in order to be complete is the Hagania River Flood Protection um, information. So that is where we are as far as, uh, you know, matrix is concerned. And uh, once the, the board is impaneled, then, then matrix work can move forward. Sijuis Maasi for that. So um, you had mentioned in order for the master plan to be complete, the river feasibility plan needs to be completed as part of their uh, task scope of work. Um, yes, ma'am. And so, as I mentioned previously, I had met with uh, two representatives from GIDA, and they had said that the previous board had uh, approved, uh, if, I, if I'm re recalling correctly, but there had been some sort of documentation showing that they had completed 30% of that river, river feasibility study. Um, is that your understanding as well? Yes, ma'am. Okay, very good. So it's good to see that there's some movement on that and um, that we're, we're getting that much closer to actually finalizing the master plan so that it can be continuing to move forward. Um, with, oh, yes. Yes, so thank you, Diego. Is the um, river feasibility the same as the Agatnia River Flood Protection Plan? Yes, Senator. All right, and so the, and that's 30% complete, and that's the only project that's still pending from Matrix? Yes, ma'am. All right. And uh, did they have a contract, or 
you're waiting for the board to approve a contract for matrix or the task order i guess for matrix under uh, the idea we have a uh, proposal oh, I'm sorry. we have a proposal from matrix to complete it and actually i have a copy All right. here okay that would be under continuing under the idiq yes ma'am for the for the Hagatnia master plan uh it was just broken up in certain phases yeah. and the Hagatnia River Flood Protection is the uh, final phase of that task order. Final phase, okay. Can we just get a copy of that when you're done today? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And Alasio, what is the timeline of completion for the river feasibility study? Well, should we move forward with it, um, they should be able to complete it within six to eight months. Okay. Thank you. And um, I believe in, that meeting that I had with the two Gita representatives, um, <clears throat> they have previously asked for three no-cost uh, matrix, had previously asked for three no-cost extensions. Um, so just for clarity, is that something the board needs to continue um, deciding on that there needs to perhaps be another no-cost extension if, if uh, one of you could help us understand where that part is at? Uh, yes, Senator. Um, well, you know, due to the, the challenges of, uh, you know, not having an HRA board, um, it's always been, you know, Gita's policy to, you know, not move anywhere, you know, regarding HRA unless the HR, our HRRA board is impaneled and approves um, every step taken uh, so that uh, we are in sync with how you know, the funds are being spent. So does that, does that mean um, that they are currently for the next six to eight months working in that no cost extension or whether they'll need to apply for one more with this newly impaneled board? Yes, Senator, um, their, their contract, the, the extensions are granted in order for them to, you know, continue the work, um, but that, doesn't happen unless the HRA board approves so. So um, when the HRA board approves, then, then their work may commence or continue rather. And so once the HRA board is impaneled, then we uh, give notification for to Matrix to proceed to complete the Forgotten River flood protection, which um, you know, according to them, it would be six to eight months. Sidhu um, Asmasi. I'd like to ask as well, uh, Mr. Nick. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, let me also just um, recognize that uh, Speaker Munya Barnes has been able to join us, Sidhu Asmasi, and she is uh, vice chair of the committee and uh, a very important part of the process because she has been here uh, part of this process since ever since. Um, this uh, authority has been moving forward through at least three administrations. Each administration has contributed and helped move it forward. And, uh, uh, but in addition to that, she has been part of this process even before uh, the administrations officially took it on. So I just want to acknowledge that but uh, I would also like to uh, ask Mr. Kaswani um, if you could help us all understand um, something like a river feasibility study is probably new, a new concept for most of us. So if you could explain from your background uh, what that means and how important it is to the master plan. Sure, uh, the, the feasibility study the feasibility study actually establishes the feasibility of whether the project is executable and under the parameters in which is executable. For example, we would lay out the, the requirements for the project and what we want to do. And, and Matrix working along with us would determine if that, if that goal is feasible. And so the feasibility study actually documents and writes down and prepares drawings and specifications on how to proceed with the project implementation. And the question, I, I, I wanted to ask a question also along with that. So when we say that we are 30% complete, 
Are we 30 percent complete for the feasibility study or is it 30 percent complete for the master plan? Because if it's an IDIQ contract, 30 percent of feasibility study can be a lot different than 30 percent of the master plan. Yeah. Oh, sorry. sorry. No, no, no. Uh, thank you. Uh, if I may, thank you, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, first of all, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge Mr. Nick Kaswani, who is the legislative representative representative to the Haganya Restoration Authority, and I want to thank you right now uh, publicly for taking uh, uh, the time to step up to the plate to volunteer to help the uh, uh, board uh, directors out as it relates to moving the Haganya Master Plan over um, in your expertise as a um, a retired, I understand a retired engineer. Uh, I, I, I know that you truly understand the, the intricacies of how the master plan needs to be facilitated forward. And when we first uh, started again uh, revisiting what the previous administration had set into place, there were some concerns that came up with um, I don't know if it was talked about yet as far as the studies that needed to be done. So your question is right in as far as uh, are we looking at this present study that you just mentioned is 30% complete or 30% from the whole master plan or just the studies within the feasibility studies within itself? Because there's a lot of moving components and moving parts. And when, and when the, um, uh, primary meetings were being given to the 35th Guam legislature, some of the concerns that were brought up in detail just without even looking at the master plans were all these different studies that need to be done and which needs to come first and, and as it relates to the infrastructure. So maybe uh, as one who doesn't know anything about engineering but does know that infrastructure is very important, very vital, knowing that even with the Paseo uh, de Susana uh, uh, land uh, baseball field there, that that is on reclaimed land, meaning that was man-built, man-made, and not through uh, natural uh, causes. And, and, and where do we go in as far as that infrastructure on the reports moving forward? I think one of the things that uh, we should look at is to look at the schedule for matrix from the original contract and see how they've laid out the sequence of events. They should have laid out the sequence of events in the order in which it's necessary to complete the feasibility study. So there should be a list of activities that indicate this comes first, this comes next, and what sequence they have that in. So I haven't had a chance to look at that, but I'm looking, I will be looking at the contract to see if in fact as it's required in the contract number one, and if it's not required in the contract, then it's a different issue. But if it's required in the contract to, for them to submit a schedule to, to, to us, then we should look at the schedule and see what is the sequence of events that they have outlined in there and where are we compared to that to be, in order to be able to ascertain the percent complete is it percent complete of the time expended? Is it percent complete of the physical work done? What, when we say percent complete, it's a very subjective term. You have to look at what that means in terms of whether it's a task that's complete for 30 percent, whether it's a full project that's complete 30 percent, or whether they've expended 30 percent of the time. So since this is, this is an IDIQ contract, I would imagine that the time is not the element, so it would have to be one of the other two. Sorry. Okay, if I just may clarify that the, the master plan and the contract are two separate things. Uh, what we're talking about, I believe, is, is the completion of Matrix's contract. The master plan has been finished. They've, been, they've, su they've, they've, they've submitted that to us. Um, the completion is 30% of their contract. The only remaining part of that contract is the River feasibility study. That has not started yet. Is that the letter that was given to us saying that if for an additional $500,000 that we'll go ahead and proceed with the plan? Correct. Do you have that letter? Yes, ma'am. Do you have that letter? I gave you a copy of this yeah. to you at our last meeting. That is that, that letter. That is the final task in, in um, their contract. So you're saying that if we pay an additional $500,000, then their contract would be completed? Correct. Yes. I mean, it was already it, it was already a part of their contract. That was so, that 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 
So why the additional 500,000? It's not additional. It was already um, a part of the contract. It was in phases. This is the last phase. So you're saying uh, the $500,000, and, and it'd be good to hear from Gita, um, who's been, I think, managing the contract um, so, and the payments. So there's $500,000 left of their overall contract. It's not any new monies correct. that they're requesting? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. The amount's 515, just to clarify, $515,000. And we have allocated $300,000 that's been sitting in our bank account um, for this river feasibility study. And uh, you know, that's also been a part of, of, of my goal over the past three months is to, to identify that additional funds, the $215,000 that we can um, collect uh, to finish the contract, finalize the contract with Matrix. And on slide 15, I do address the, the river feasibility study. Can you please um, go up to slide 15? Okay. Lasia, can you just clarify because it was said earlier that the feasibility study is a part of the master plan, but then you said that the master plan has already been completed and submitted, so please clarify. The river, the river feasibility is a part of the contract with Matrix. Right. It's both. <laughs> so to continue with the master plan, um, because of the floodplain, we can't do any construction until we do the river feasibility study, because currently, if you look at slide 15, one of the th key things impacting Higatnia is um, when they turned around and created the lot and block system, they diverted the river. Um, and they required the government of Guam to go out and acquire properties under imminent domain and build bridges. Currently under FEMA, we're required in these areas to build up to 11 feet. As you can see in Adaloop, you have to build up to 11 feet. In zone AE, you have to build up to eight feet. Currently the museum is built up 11 feet for flooding. So once we do the, the study, the channelization of the river, that will help mitigate the flooding. And so in, in certain areas, that means we'll be allowed to move forward with construction on, on ground floor. Um, the updated 2009 FEMA map identifies the, 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 the area of Plaza de España where we would love to build the go new government civic complex as, as not in the flood zone, actually. Um, next slide, please. Uh, if I could ask a question. So um, they are interconnected and it is part of the whole. Um, what happens with the with the the document labeled master plan what happens to that if this river feasibility study and the hydrological study require changes to the master plan document mm -hmm. um, and so i think that's how they're so interconnected that if the feasibility study says uh, that certain things are are not going to need to be addressed because the footprint is or is not changing um, and other issues uh, that really the master plan cannot be considered completed because the feasibility study uh, and the later hydrology study may, may have some very serious changes to the document that's already uh, in place. Uh, maybe as a as civil engineer, uh, sorry, I didn't mean sorry, to Sorry, you were addressing me or him? Uh, yeah, so I, I, th I think the, the feasibility study will, the feasibility study would definitely have the potential of having an impact on the final feasibility. I mean, the, the hydrological study and the, and the study of the riverfront will have an impact, may have an impact on the final submittal of the feasibility study. So the feasibility study may need to be updated based upon what the findings were. Uh, I would imagine that obviously the, if the master plan is close to completion or is, complete, is submitted as a completed document, then there were some assumptions made on how the riverfront was going to be, what the hydrology was going to be. So if that changes, then some of the things the feasibility study may change. 
So I think what you're saying um, is that when those studies are completed, um, they may be needing to go back to the document and, and make some changes. I mean, we don't know one way or the other right now, but uh, th it may need to actually change the document labeled that, master plan. If I may answer, I, he hasn't seen the document, <laughs> the master, right, master but plan. But he's a so, civil engineer, yeah. so if I could just hear from the civil engineer and then from you as well. I'm sure. Like, everybody weighing in is good, I think. <laughs> as, I, as I mentioned, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's a correct assessment. That it, 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 may, that, it yeah. may need to be updated. Uh, basic, the basic structure in the feasibility yeah. study may need to be updated as a result of the findings of the study completion. If the study is 30% complete, we still have a ways to go. We got six to eight months of time left to complete that complete study. Lots of things can change between now and then. Lots of assumptions may change. Lots of design considerations may change. And if the study, let's say, was done a few years ago and is done to current standards, that may also have an impact on the, on the outcome of the study. And if that changes, then it may impact the, the uh, master plan. Then again, there might not be much reference in the master plan. I haven't looked at the detail of the master plan. There may not be enough in the master plan to make any major changes to it. It may be just minor, but that will, de that will be determined as we go along. Yes, and, and, and Madam uh, Chair of my hand, just really briefly, briefly looking over what uh, uh, the uh, director has provided for us in as far as looking at the matrix uh, uh, letter that was submitted on September 2018, I, I, I want to share with you that there's some information provided by uh, the scope of services and, and the baseline information of what is provided and the detail of what uh, the Armor Co Army Corps of Engineer has proposed in this, uh, as it relates to the flood damage reduction uh, project intended for, for the flood control, but also it details there that based on the bridges that were needed and that were built and the information that they don't have from the previous uh, timelines as it relates to Army Corps of Engineer, that there may be more additional work that needs to be done and that, um, that they would have to do a site visit. <laughs> Literally go uh, I recommend that, um, uh, uh, recommend uh, flood control improvements and consideration be done that this work will require site visit and meetings with, per with personnel involved in flood control efforts. So even at that, uh, I know uh, Ms. Lazia said that there was $300,000 in the bank right now and moving forward with matrix that has already um, um, been, been the uh, company to have the project moving forward. I, my question again is, is that based on the money that was already given and provided to them? Is that 300,000 including in the additional work that needs to be done? Or is there going to be a need for another RFP to go? Again, not having visited this for the last four years until just about a month ago, very briefly, those are questions that came to place and, and Madam Chair, that's why I felt that it was important to help the administration move forward on a master plan that was already said was supposed to come before this body, that, that a, a engineer be appointed uh, for the representation to get the expertise outside looking in. So those are, are some of the questions that I needed to ask, but again, the 300,000 that you said was already in there, why hasn't that next step been facilitated to move forward from the, from the uh, uh, um, agency? And has that site visit been done? Because when a presentation was given to us from G GWA uh, most recently in the last month, 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 month and a half, the investment of the six to eight million dollars, if not more, for the treatment plant um, uh, that, that um, that they wanted to put all that millions of dollars into upgrading and refurbishing and keeping up to the federal standards, yet the Hagania Restoration uh, Agency says that they have plans to delete that in the scope of work that was provided to us. So again, I, I'm just from a standpoint of, of wanting to ask the expertise 
is why I, we, we, it was important that we, we said um, Mr. Kiswani to help us out here. So um, you can just, just base, I don't know if you read this or seen it, but I, I think it's important that we at least talk about that. No, Senator, I have not read that. And I have asked uh, Senator Marsh here to get a copy of whatever documentation is important related to this decision-making process, and I'll be glad to review those and get back with you uh, in an appropriate time frame yeah. so you can share it with her and, and also talk to uh, Ms. Lassia about it and get, get going from there. So just Masi, so perhaps you could uh, answer the first part of the speaker's question about uh, just providing general information about why the $300,000 has been sitting and, and has not yet been facilitated, um, facilitated to the, the consulting company. Sure, thank you um, for the question. Uh, um, again, it's, it's a matter of funding. Um, the HRA has not been funded in over eight years, um, and we are in, in the process of trying to assess what the real estate taxes and the improvements here in the Gatnia are so that we can, um, so that the, the Department of Revenue and Tax can submit those funds to, to our agency to move forward with these studies. Uh, I believe that we took out a loan, an MO, MO, uh, MOU with GIDA to help fund some of this. So we could either continue to, that, to do that or we can you know, look towards the funding that is supposed to be supplied to us by the law. So with the... We're $215,000 short, that's why. Um, we haven't moved forward with this. Okay. So, uh, with regards to the payment plan, and and perhaps uh, Gita can also help answer this. So, uh, I was told during the meeting that the first thirty percent had been paid for. So, uh, would it be possible now that we're getting a board in place? Maybe that was the holdup factor. I'm not sure, but the executive director can can tell us. Um, would it be possible then to move forward with the payment for the next 30%? And if so, would they need to do the work first or would the payment come prior? If you could explain that and then the executive director can also um, talk about maybe uh, it might have been the, the board not being impaneled that held things up. Yes, Senator, it is the board not being impaneled that did hold things up because Guido will not proceed to pay the contractor unless HRA approves Without the board, then um, HRA, you know, wasn't able to approve, um, you know, any invoices submitted by the contractor. So Gita would not pay that unless HRA does. Um, I believe uh, they're up to their nine now. Or they're, they're, they're very close to uh, vetting and getting all the nine in place. Um, so once the board is impaneled and uh, they are ready to move on, then Gita would be able to work with the payment of the next 30%, perhaps? Yes, ma'am, that is correct. Um, again, you know, th this, this entire project is you know, for HRA and completing the master plan. Thus, Gita will not pay anything unless the, you know, the recipient agency approves it first. So any, any invoices submitted by the contractor has to be reviewed and any deliverables has to be accepted by HRA. Once that's done, then Gita will pr proceed to, um, you know, pay the contractor, as well as, you know, moving forward. It's good to hear of those uh, checks and balances and processes in place that uh, a board is reviewing. They are having their ex officio members uh, potentially weigh in uh, and so forth. Um, and that being required by Gita as well before moving forward. Could we just go back to this river, uh, the river flooding project? Could you please explain it? It's my understanding that what we're talking about is the plan proposes that we are going to reroute the river. Is that, is that not right? I, that's not correct, Senator. Just if I it says could, channelization watershed feasibility study to determine, to, de, to establish the Hagatnya River corridor, to but, shore it up. The channelization would, would be um, the reinforcing of the river. Um, for instance, if you look down at, um, in PD, how they have the boulders yes. in place mm -hmm. to help um, 
you know, keep up the sides of the river. Um, it would address possible issue the, uh, of dredging of the river to help the water flow out faster. Okay. So all of the, 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 the channelization of the river addresses the, the floodplain. Okay. So it trying says, to mitigate any possible flooding within Hagatnya. All right. So this, it says this project... I'm sorry, what are you looking at? I'm, I'm looking at the, your Hagatnya... Um, oh, okay. Well, this is... Oh, no. So they're different. So you've got the, the river feasibility... Oh, the list. Okay. Yes. The, uh, Hagatnya River, you have a slide, I guess, on the Hagatnya River Channelization and Watershed Feasibility Study, and that would allow for development of the River Walk District. And so, it says the project um, requirement estimated at 1.2 million for the feasibility study with GovGuam share at 50%. Is that still that is the estimate if we were to, to um, engage with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers. That's how much they would charge us. If we were to move on this contract with Matrix, it would only cost us $515,000. And that would take six to eight months. If we were to go with the um, U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, it would take about 18 months. And I just want to correct, make a correction over here. Um, regarding the balance due, that's $196,000. That's for past um, uh, work done. That doesn't, that's not a part of the uh, river feasibility study. So that, those are apples and oranges. Or phases. Yeah, phases. <laughs> do, do right. you have, the, the feasibility study is supposed to determine the estimate of what that project is going to cost. Is that correct? Um, the river feasibility study addresses the flooding in Hagatnya, because currently FEMA requires that any new developments be built up to 11 feet or 10 feet, depending on where it is in the floodplain. Right. Once we channelize the river, increase you know, the water's ability to move out of Hagatnya, that mitigate the flooding, that will help us to um, bring down flood insurance, um, that will help developers come in. Right now, it's too costly to develop in Hagatnya because of possible right. flooding. Right. So that's what the river feasibility study addresses. Yeah, but so that project uh, will be funded by HRRA, the project itself. So the feasibility study is just to determine pretty much how much it's going to cost, how long it might take, and who Correct, yeah, correct, okay. yes. All right. Uh, and possibly the impacts, the possible impacts uh, of the channelization yes. and so forth? Uh, yes, some of the factors that go into is not just the cost estimate, it's the, whether, the, whether it's feasible to do that, whether it's legal to do that, whether it meets NEPA requirements, whether you can actually uh, widen the channel, uh, deepen the channel, whether you can, how you're going to close it up and how it's going to impact the surrounding areas, whether it's in the flood zone. So there's a lot of technical factors that are involved in the feasibility study for determining if in fact that project is viable. So when you're at 30% of, of that project already, so you've done some studies, you've done some evaluations, and now it's a matter of taking it forward and going down into the nitty-gritty details and seeing if in fact that is a viable program, project within the program. So if I may, uh, Madam Chair, if I may, thank you. So if you're saying that there may be a chance that the viability of moving on in the master plan could be changed as far as, as full implementation and then it may need to be revisited? Is, is If your hydrological studies and your other channel studies indicate that the current proposed methodology in your Hagatnya master plan will not be sufficient or will not be viable, then yes, it is a possibility that we may have to change the approach to that project and then incorporate that into the program master plan. Masi for that. So um, with, with uh, some of the statements 
about channelization um, allowing things uh, coming sort of from the, well not sort of, but coming from the academic field, um, I would, in, in writing this, I would say uh, has the potential to allow for the city to fully develop in certain ways, uh, has the potential to reduce barriers for development investments. I mean, I think uh, we're, we're hoping for very productive findings from the study, but uh, I would just say that I, I think it's appropriate to add in that kind of language, that channelization, and then some of the predicted outcomes that these are potentially the case. Uh, and I think that falls in line with what you were saying, Mr. Kaswani. Uh, yes, I think uh, that, that's in line with what I was trying to say. The, the whole purpose behind the feasibility study is to determine if, in fact, the project is feasible under the current scenario. If the scenarios have changed, the timing has changed, and the hydrology has changed, then we need to ascertain that. Once we ascertain that, then it's, that's why you have a master plan, which is a preliminary master plan. It's, as she was saying earlier, it's, it's a work in progress. So if the feasibility study changes some of the requirements based upon new rules and regulations, based upon new requirements that we lay out on, on matrix, for example, to saying, no, we don't want this, we want it this way. And if the study moves in that direction, then it will have an impact on the master plan. And I just want to make clear that, you know, uh, whatever the feasibility study says, there will be a way to revitalize. We're all interested in moving forward and revitalizing. It's just determining which is the best path forward. So, um, we, uh, like I said, I just want to emphasize that we will be able to revitalize. The authority will be moving forward. It's just having all the tools and information in place. Uh, but that does lead me to a question we hear so much nowadays. You know, this plan has been around, the authority has been around for literally decades now. And we've, we've really seen other Pacific Islands like Hawaii uh, develop these master plans to contend with the rising sea levels and climate change. So um, I'm really wondering, this may be something for the board to take on uh, to consider and uh, maybe get some input from others about whether that needs to, th that kind of an impact study needs to occur. Like, that's not my expertise, but maybe uh, that might be something the board wants to consider that we need to also have one about rising sea levels. We are on a coastal plain here, and uh, if the sea level rises as it's predicted to, even just a little bit, I think that can have huge implications for Hagatnya. What Hawaii has done, I was told uh, recently by one of their senators, is they are actually moving in a couple hundred yards in some places uh, where they're, they're actually moving in some of their very important infrastructure, like uh, their power generators and so forth, uh, that's some of how they're contending with it, which just really brought that home to me that we may need to really seriously look at that. So, but that would be up for the board and uh, the authority to take on, but maybe you have a comment? Uh, 10 years ago, when the feasibility st study started, we, we didn't have worries about climate change to the extent we do now. And obviously there's a, huge debate whether there is, whether it's real or not, okay? Uh, it is real, sea levels are rising, all scientific community will tell you that, and that needs to be taken into account. So as far as the, phys as far as the study is concerned, they will, matrix should be and will be taken into account, we'll make sure that they are taking into account that potential of rising sea levels, and if they are, how they're gonna impact the surrounding areas, particularly the river, the river channel, how it's going to impact that. You know, if you, have a, if you have a five foot river and the sea levels are going to rise three feet, then you're going to have a two foot river, two foot deep river, and that's not where we want to go. So that has to come into place. So when we look at the technical analysis of what Matrix is proposing, we are going to make sure as a board, along working with the, with the executive director to make sure that the design is compliant with the current conditions and conditions going in the future. 
Sue Joyce Mossy for that. So, again, getting back to the big picture, I just want to reassure everybody that there is an answer. It's just making sure that we're asking the right questions so we have the right answers. Um, and I, I know that there is going to be a way forward. Uh, we just want it to be as well thought out as possible and um, to be taken into consideration as many of the known issues as possible. So we look forward to that. And uh, certainly we are looking forward to some providing as much support as we can. So please be communicating with our committee and uh, my office for ways that we can be helping um, the, the whole authority move forward and, and finding those, those answers. May I speak? Thank you. Uh, as, as I did mention prior, that the master plan is a vision and just a framework. It can be changed. Um, to address your, your, you had mentioned something, uh, your conversation with, uh, about regarding the sewage treatment plant. Um, we did have conversations with um, um, the um, Waterworks Department and we addressed this with them. Uh, with that? Um, sorry, just reading from my notes here. The, the Hagatna Sewage Treatment Plant, it's, it's a federal court action that has to be addressed at the executive and legislature um, leadership, leadership level um, regarding its relocation. The HRRA can only make recommendations to the relocation. Uh, last year, Chairman John Calvo, Executive Director Joseph Cameron, I'm sorry, previous year, and planning staff Joe Santos did meet with Simon Chan Sanchez from the CCU and the chief engineer, uh, acting GM Tom Cruise, to discuss the relocation of the STP, the sewage treatment plant. They all agreed that this action is at the highest level of government of Guam, but the chief engineer did provide to us a cost breakdown to relocate it. So again, the HR here is to make recommendations and to build this framework and vision. Um, it can be changed. Go ahead. It can be changed. Um, yes, ma'am. So maybe the question that I wanted to ask was, has there been communication with HRRA and GWA based on the presentation that GWA just gave to us not even a month ago when the question was specifically asked in the last term, previous term or today, based on the investment that you're showing this August body, a six to eight million dollar Million, eight million dollars in upgrade to the Agania treatment wastewater system. Are there plans to relocate and move a, any intent? And the answer that came back to us is no. So I'm, I'm only asking based on, as, as one who supports a plan moving forward and the revitalization of Agania, I want to make sure that the concerns that the government on one hand is saying something and on the right hand is saying another thing and they're not talking to each other. And I think it's important that the stakeholders come to the same table. As I see, I, I see Mr. Kanata who has approached the table from Guam Preservation Trust. I want to say thank you, Madam Chair, for him coming this morning because I think it's important that as we have a lot of, I mean, at least some institutional knowledge that may help out, I'm getting a mixed signal. I want to see this plan move. According to documentations, if presentation provided to me today says that this presentation was complete since February of 2018, the previous administration did not move to put it on the agenda. And if the excuse for it was because they were tied up in the campaign trail, that's not an excuse. I want to see the plan work. I want to see it moving over. But maybe my question, my, 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 my question would be, have the stakeholders 
come to the same table? Has this, the, the agency asked GWA what their most recent plan is as of, because the chairman of the board and Mr. Benaventi and Mr. Miguel Berdalio, and I will put them to task because they did the presentation to us, that they have no, no uh, plans to move this wastewater treatment. Yes. I'm speaking on behalf of HRRA, you know, if they said they have no plans to move it, the question that follows that is saying, did you consider rising sea levels in your current plan that you have finalized and presented to us? If they have not, then there's some work to be done on the GWS side to say, you know, I mean, I know it's not outside, outside of this committee, but they need to look and see if, in fact, we're considering, a, you know, four foot, three foot, two foot, however much rise in sea levels we considered, did they have also considered that? And if they have not, then they need to go back and relook at their design, relook at their plan and saying, oh my God, does this make sense to continue on the plan that we have with that much investment or do we need to re revisit how we're going to approach that? So that, again, can also change our master plan. I mean, yes. so it, it has its, all of these have serious impacts on each other, but we need to work collaboratively, collaboratively yes. to make sure that we're all on the same page. And that's why, Madam Chair, I, I, uh, with all due respect and, and the appreciation of having this information hearing is to be able to, be, to address these concerns based on the administration change based on, on the presentations that have been provided to this August body. So to actually bring the stakeholders in, and at least the responsibility on our side is to make sure that every stakeholder from the administration today, the new administration, as it relates to the impact of all the other agencies, including Guam Preservation Trust, is to see um, uh, have they met to come together to address some of the concerns that have been uh, brought up at the preliminary, uh, the meetings that we had before this informational hearing? And, and again, it's really important that, that this revitalization for Hergantia is, is way long overdue. I'm hoping, Madam Chair, that you give the opportunity for the Executive Director from Guam Preservation Trust to at least say some remarks, but I really think that that uh, uh, just based on the implement of the designation of Mr. Kiswani as an engineer, a, re a retired engineer, to help us move forward on this, uh, is it prudent to say that the plan submitted in February 8 is a vile plan to ha to come back to this body to get approved? Or do we just go back and bring the stakeholders together, even in this body, to see what we can do to, to air out all the concerns that our, our colleagues have or that the community has? Because in order for us to get this plan approved by this body, we have to make sure that all those questions are answered. And, and I truly would like to see if, if Mr. Kanata uh, from Guam Preservation Trust uh, has any uh, remarks as it relates to the whole Algotnia revitalization, if, if I may, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, so we are very uh, pleased to have Mr. Kanata. He is the Chief Program Officer of the Guam Preservation Trust and as such is an ex-officio member of the Hagatnya uh, Restoration and Redevelopment Authority. So we're very glad that you uh, were able to ha have the time to come down. Yes, and uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, again, first of all, I'm Joe Kinata, the Chief Program Officer of Guam Preservation Trust. And uh, we'd like to thank you for inviting us. Uh, we wouldn't have known about this uh, if you did not send your, your, uh, your invitation to us. And it, it, is, it is right that all the stakeholders sh should come together. And just, um, just in retrospect, there, there was communication, the final, a document that was sent to all of the ex officio and I guess all if I'm not mistaken all of the uh, the uh, stakeholders uh, of a checklist and uh, stating uh, that the final uh, master plan um, has been reviewed by us and and we did submit a couple of concerns but those concerns have been 
taken care of. So I know that there, there was a process uh, that went through uh, last year uh, and we were part of that process. Uh, and we're here uh, because we're stakeholders. There are historic um, sites here, over a dozen sites here in Hagatnya, uh, and the Guam Preservation Trust currently owns three sites. So, so it, is, it is just right that we, we sit here and work with HRA uh, to make sure that at least the historic preservation um, uh, area is addressed. Thank you. So we have just a little bit of uh, time left, and um, I think this would be a nice opportunity to hear from the executive director uh, some of the steps that you hope to move forward with this year, including perhaps some of the, the staff um, that you're hoping to attain to continue to be filling out your office, but also the, the steps um, that are going to get you towards, you've spoken a little bit about uh, towards identifying the funding that will allow you to uh, work with Matrix to complete that feasibility study that's so integral. Um, but there are also some other steps. Um, there was a, a public law that was passed last term that requires, um, let's see, it's a public law, it's based off of uh, Bill 1534, it's public law uh, 3408, that requires um, another study to be done before any government agency, its office space is uh, constructed within Hagatnya. So um, there's that study that's required, the hydrology study coming up, um, but for this, upcoming year, um, if you could outline some of the steps that you hope to accomplish. Why does it keep going off? Um, just to reiterate, um, one of the things that I really want to do once we bring the board together and all the ex officio members uh, is to actually bring them all up to speed on the master plan and have them re-ratify it so that, that is definitely one of our goals, is, is to go over the master plan and make sure everyone um, you know, approves it so we can move forward. Um, um, again, my uh, priorities right now are, are definitely finding the funding, office space, um, staffing, finding the, the, the planners, the program coordinators. Um, with regards to the office, um, space study. This, this has been addressed in the master plan. Matrix did a study of the best practices of the types of um, offices and the square footage that, that you know, uh, uh, executives need or, or assistance. And, and I actually addressed this in, in the uh, PowerPoint presentation. Um, OPA did a study in 2017 um, OPA did a study in 2017 regarding office lease, office leases, yes, um, rents in, um, and currently the, the governor of Guam is spending $11.7 million uh, in rent annually. Um, the study that Matrix did It's in slide, oh, slide 44, 2017. Um, if we were to, to re-centralize all the government agencies into the uh, government civic center, that would save us $5.6 million annually. Um, there's a graph I did currently is it, uh, sorry, sorry to interrupt. Um, is it all government agencies or is it, um, I, I think in the uh, appendix or the accompanying section of the plan, they mentioned that there would be five or six. Um, so if you could clarify. Sure, can you show slide 44, please? 
there's a listing of each building that could be built. Um, do you have a printout of the? It's, it's 44. So I have a list of all the different agencies that will go in the appropriate buildings. Slide 44. How much those agencies are currently paying in rent, what their square, square footage is in 2015, what it was a decade ago. Um, with the study that Matrix did, the appropriate amount of space that sh should be used is 151,000 square feet. The governor of Guam currently occupies 255,000 square feet. That's 100,000 square feet of wasted space. Uh, at the average rent that they're paying of $2.16 per square foot, that's $223,000 of wasted space annually in addition to the rent that we're paying when we could all be centralized in Hagatnya. So I, that, I believe that addresses the, the public law, the, the office space study. Um, also this year, we're going to be working with, uh, hopefully moving forward with the hydrology study. Uh, right now we're uh, talking with the governor about which projects that we could possibly um, do in Hagatnya. Um, possibly moving the, the, the Veterans Center. Um, I, I, right now, there's, there's already a lot on, on our plate right now with, with finding office space and staffing. So th th those are our main goals over the next six months. Is, yes, Joe. Is, Yes, uh, just point of uh, information, uh, the feasibility study was conducted by the Guam Preservation Trust uh, and, uh, that's, and then the HRA uh, board had approved that feasibility study and had uh, directed uh, Matrix to include that study into the plan. So that's why you're having those figures and that's why you're having uh, the, concept, the conceptual part for office buildings. And, 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 and if I may, uh, Mr. Kinata, is that from the uh, public law that was, uh, was that the funding source that was provided to you guys, the 300,000 from the public law 15 or the, yeah, public law 3408, the 300,000 to do the feasibility study for a unified government office facility? No, uh, it was... Which one are you talking about? It, it was uh, the Plaza de España uh, feasibility study. We intended to look at the Palacio itself and then the surrounding area of the Palacio. So our consultant had went further and did research work on how many uh, office buildings were outside Hagatnya, uh, how many FTEs were housed in those office buildings, and how much uh, those uh, agencies or programs were paying for their rents. And so we came up with, I believe, uh, a roundabout figure of three, three, point, three plus million dollars a month that the government was paying for, which, you know, it equates to about $11 million a year uh, uh, in, in that respect. But, uh, but yes, so, so we went and we had different scenarios in our feasibility study to present to HRA uh, because our focus really was on the Plaza de España. Our focus was on that historic site and that's why that feasibility study came about because we wanted to make sure that whatever happens around there that is aligned with the historic, the integrity of the building. And that was incorporated into, into the HRA. report that Matrix Yes. Included the numbers, and that's how the numbers got uh, incorporated into the. I believe so. Thank you. Okay, so um, here on page B20, um, it said it, the key findings. Oh, sorry, I took your. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I took your that. Um, that. Uh, there are perhaps six GovGuam agencies slash departments that were planned for relocation. B20. Uh, yes, it's nearly the last page, B20.
in childhood. Uh, so the second bullet point, because it uh, notes that uh, DOL and DLM are going into their own buildings and are not included. Uh, they're assuming that Gita and McCog will remain in their current locations. Uh, thank you. And that uh, uh, then a total of six GovGuam agencies slash departments are potentially planned for relocation. So what I did was I took the OPA study and cross-referenced it with this and came up with um, a, an updated um, report on, on the space, um, identifying the particular buildings that they would go into. I don't believe that the, the OPA study this is, uh, was included, incorporated into this. So I wanted to use real figures um, that were provided to me by OPA. Okay, so that, that could potentially be something worth updating, uh, perhaps. Um, it, there, it, oh, it is something that I, I had cited yeah. in my thing. Good. Um, um, are, there, are there any other steps uh, for this year that you'd like to talk about before we uh, conclude uh, or take a break? Well, one of the projects that we're looking at right now is the government resources building, um, trying to identify funding for that and re-examining the uh, design of it. Um, it's currently, uh, the project is slated to go on to Block 24 over by Tommy's Pizza and the Halali Center. Um, that's currently a five-story building and it could possibly go up to 10 stories. So we're looking at redesigning of that to, to accommodate for any future growth um, with you know, the government agencies. And um, that's, that's something that I've been speaking with the governor about. Is that something that's outside the current uh, flood zone plane? Because um, it is farther out, so perhaps it is. Yes, but it, it, it's... Um, designed to be built already 10 feet up. So that, that, that would address the, the, flood, the flooding. Okay. Perhaps yeah. a parking lot underneath or something like that, as we've seen with some other buildings already. Yes. I see. OK. Um, are there any other questions uh, that you have, Speaker? Um, uh, Madam Chair. And first of all, I just want to thank you for holding this informational hearing and seeing some of the stakeholders here. I, I really would ask that a follow-up information hearing be brought based on some of the concerns and, and based on the letter that, uh, or the presentation that you had submitted to HRRA, um, uh, to Ms. Glossia, to bring back to this body on the update as it relates to all the, the, the um, studies that have been already um, initiated and then whatever's completed. Uh, if that could be provided and then uh, hopefully the stakeholders um, could make the opportunity to meet uh, even coming into this body so that we can uh, see what necessary changes or what updates need to be included. And again, uh, as, as Mr. Kaswani talked about a master plan, every time you, you have a blueprint, and uh, of course, when, 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 when you have to look at the changing of time and, and all the things that come into play, change orders are, are very common, but you gotta make sure that those things are updated. So maybe it's really good that the stakeholders come, all the stakeholders as it relates to the Haganya redevelopment come together and, and uh, give an update to, to us on what is it going to take to truly uh, uh, see this plan. The, we as a government have spent millions uh, of dollars uh, to have uh, a couple of plans presented to us uh, uh, on two previous administrations. And I think what we need to do is make that checklist, continue to look at that blueprint, to look at the layout, and check off uh, what is completed. Uh, I know Gita is 
given us an updated presentation of what has been their task order to do. I think it's important that all of um, HRRA's task orders that are needed to be done, that we have a follow-up. Uh, what's also crucial that uh, Ms. Lossi has stated uh, was the fact that the, the, um, the composition of the office and, and the uh, employees needed to help uh, uh, facilitate this moving over forward and to work with the board, I think that's also very key because uh, without the board, uh, um, Ms. Casil has said that they can't move over. Uh, this has been that step. Again, the legislature has uh, provided the, the designation for that. I understand that um, we have uh, board members that uh, have been appointed. Uh, they're j it's just getting their clearances that the governor uh, is going to be sending those uh, board members down to us so that we can expeditiously uh, have the public hearing for them so that we can give you the full complement of, of what it needs to facilitate this. And I'm very excited uh, and, and just know that the collaboration with Guam Preservation Trust, who has been a part of Agani and says they own three sections here. Uh, I think this is what we need to do. Hagania is the capital mm -hmm. city of our beautiful island. It should be revitalized. It should be where everything should be happening. And I think moving forward, we just, we have a plan. If we need to, if we need to make the necessary changes to accommodate what the stakeholders have to say, uh, GPT brought up that there were some uh, issues. If it needs to be updated just to make sure that those questions are addressed, uh, in more detail, then, then let's follow through. But I commit uh, to the administration and to our people of Guam that it is important that we move forward for this, and I'm here to work closely with you guys to at least see this moving uh, forward. Um, uh, again, there was a lot of money spent, and I think it's important that our people have the best uh, capital city uh, that Guam has to offer for the rest of the world. Santa Masi, and I'm hoping that we can have a follow-up information hearing with all the stakeholders. I really like that suggestion, so uh, suggest Masi for that, and I think um, I too am looking forward to an exciting year. I think that uh, with all the people in place, we really have a lot going for us that we're going to continue to build on the good work that has happened and really see some some progress continuing to happen uh, in all the right ways, that we're checking the boxes as the speaker mentioned, we're making sure that all our I's are dotted and all our T's are crossed and that we've got all that foundational work in place. Um, so I wanna commend everybody for doing their part to make sure that we're moving forward in the best ways possible. There was uh, Mr. Zerzan uh, who did sign up. He's the only one who hasn't been at the table yet and we're down to a very few minutes. So if we could um, just have you come forward uh, to sit at the table and then just provide perhaps uh, three or so minutes of testimony. Uh, my name is Paul Zerzan, and I stumbled upon this meeting. I came here for something else, but um, I'm sort of shocked by it. The village that has the least problems in Guam is Aganya. Aganya is essentially a ghost town because time has passed it by. It shouldn't exist. It's a swamp land. It should go back to swamp. And you look at the problems in Guam. You read the newspaper. You travel around the island, go to the different villages. The place that has the fewest problems is Aganya. And if you look at the, the violence, the drugs, the poverty, the uh, unemployment, the environmental problems, and you guys are wasting taxpayers' time and money on feasibility studies on ways to make a Ganya look pretty. I think that is so unrealistic, so out of touch with the reality of the needs of the people of Guam as to qualify as being mentally ill. All right? That's my statement. Well, Sajus Masi for coming out, Mr. Zerzan, and uh, for keeping it brief, <laughs> because we are on a tight time constraint. Um, I do want to point out as a historian that um, the, the area of Hagadnya has been a vibrant settlement since uh, at least, from, from what we know from archaeological studies, at least uh, perhaps 3,500 years ago. And so it's been a very vibrant part of the community and the archipelago. Uh, all throughout that time. And so, um, 
perhaps uh, the speaker and I would like to just uh, address that we are very committed to working to have our government funds being used wisely. Um, and it, it goes beyond uh, l making the area look pretty. We are trying to deal with uh, climate change. We're trying to deal with the uh, flooding issues. And we're really wanting to make it an economic center again. So that is part of the plan. Um, and that's a, a major component of it. And it is supposed to specifically address, it says it in the public law, it is supposed to specifically address providing some low and middle income housing. So um, it does have those goals ahead of it. Uh, maybe the speaker or the executive director want to mention some of the other goals that it has. Um, the attractiveness is there. Uh, that's part of the goal, but um, some very, very different elements that are about stimulating the economy, helping develop our tourism, helping it be a historic place where our school children are educated. Uh, some of those goals are also part of the plan. Um, if we could hear from the executive director and then, and then I'll, I'll let you respond. Thank you, speaker. Yes, you, you know, it, as you mentioned, uh, Hagatnya has uh, been around for a very long time. Um, when it was first discovered, it was considered a city, and, and I actually have pictures in the, in the slide of Agatnya when there were hundreds of people living there. It was a vibrant city. It was the center of Guam, and that's part of our mission is to re-centralize it, to give people a place where they can look towards here in, on our island. Um, not only will it stimulate econ uh, the economy, but preserving our history and promoting our culture um, is an integral part of our mission. There are heritage trails. We want to bring back the barrios. Um, part of, of HRR's mission is once it's, we've, we've achieved all our goals is to evolve into a city council and, and have one member from each of the barrios. You know, that's a, p a huge part of our culture is bringing all these things back. So um, I, I, that's all I want to say right now. Okay, if you read the book Don Quixote, right? It's a, people who try to bring back the past and try and live in the past are crazy, all right? This is the 21st century. The fact that Aganya is subject to flooding means we should not develop it. If a tsunami hits this island, Aganya would be wiped out. The majority of people now live in Dedido and now live in Jigo. And the past is dead. This is now, that was then. So don't tell me it was a thousand years or a million years, it doesn't matter. The age of dinosaurs is never gonna come back, okay? The Guam of the past is never gonna come back. And those who keep trying to bring it back are mentally ill, all right? Suzu uh, Smaasi, for your comment. Um, we are now heading into session, so I will conclude. But I do like the idea of follow-up informational meetings, uh, briefings. Uh, so I look forward to that. I really like the idea of having uh, more of the board members in here once they are all put into place and impaneled and uh, for having the other stakeholders be involved. I think if we're showing the community this kind of dialogue and we're showing them the steps forward that uh, this will continue to excite them and, and see how we're making really real progress. So, Sijuus Masi, everybody, for coming out today uh, and for your time. Sijuus Masi, Senator, Speaker, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you Sijuus Masi. So, with this, um, Can I do, where's the MIS thing? Can I, oh yeah, can I just add so that if they want to send in public comments? <laughs> okay. So just a public reminder um, that we have concluded this informational briefing and that the committee will continue to receive testimonies for the next few days. Please address your written testimony specifically to the Committee on Heritage and the Arts, Parks and Guam Products Hagatnya Revitalization, Self-Determination, and Regional Affairs, and submit it by email to office.senatorkelly at guamlegislature.org.
www.guamcongress.org. Our offices are located at the second floor of the Guam Congress Building, 163 Chalon Santo Papa, Hagatnya, Guam, 96910. Sidzuas Masi again for everybody for their attendance and participation in today's informational briefing.